Hi there and welcome. I'm George Dimple of Depth Research and I'm excited today to help you kick off the 2022 Expedition AEP presented by Agent Pipeline. Now, a word about what we do at Depth Research and what I have to share with you. At Depth Research, we are a marketing research firm and we only operate in the health insurance space. 100% of our effort is put to finding out what drives consumer behavior in healthcare. And at Depth Research, we produce a total of 12 different studies during the course of the year. You can see those highlighted in the blue column under syndicated research to help mainly health insurance carriers understand what makes consumers tick. They use these insights to help with product decisions, marketing, as well as distribution. I'm gonna share with you highlights of one of these studies, our AEP Gut Check Study. And you can see that listed on this slide as the sixth of eight Medicare studies. Now, what's this study all about? Well, the name says it all. This time of the year is a gut check. We're getting ready for the busiest time of year where all those enrollments happen. And we wanna understand how seniors feel at the midway point. Because the idea with this study is, if we know what the pain points seniors have are, if we understand how they want us to communicate with them, well, then we're gonna give ourselves the best chance of having the most successful fall selling season. Now, a few words about this study. What I'm gonna share with you are national results from a national survey of over 2,000 seniors. Now, you can see the total here at the bottom of this slide. Most of those folks had Medicare Advantage. We'll talk about the Medicare Advantage consumer, how they felt at the midway point, and what we think lies in store for this fall. We have med sub consumers in this study as well, and we'll listen to them, as well as a few hundred folks with original Medicare. That is our main survey, a gut check, a pulse check on where seniors are, their pain points, their service failures, knowing what these are, we have the best chance of connecting with them. But for you this year, we actually have a two for one, not just our main survey, our gut check survey, how do we need to prepare for the AP, but we have a separate second survey. All right, this is what you see at the bottom. We had 300 seniors participate in a whole nother research project where we were trying to understand what exactly it is that today's senior eligible looks for in the ideal Medicare agent. Now, many of you might recall the old television show, The Six Million Dollar Man. Now, that TV show was about a, a, a government agent, Colonel Steve Austin. He was in this horrible accident, almost left for dead. The government found him. They built him back up like a bionic agent where he had the superhuman strength and the superhuman speed, and he could save the day from any calamity. Well, we're gonna see if we can build up a bionic Medicare agent that has all the key attributes that seniors are looking for in their agent. Look for that towards the end. But first, let's get into the meat of this study. Let's take a pulse check, a gut check on where seniors are today. And we're gonna start with how closely bonded they feel to their overall carrier. And the idea here is if seniors feel really tightly bonded with their carrier, well, then they're going to be less likely to look for new coverage this fall. If they're a little less bonded to their carrier, well, they might be looking for a better product. Let's take a look. Now, on our first data slide, we're asking a question of depth that we love. We ask this question several times a year because we want to understand how loyal do folks feel? And this question is a basic question where we say on a scale of zero to 10, how likely do you see yourself re-upping coverage with your current carrier this upcoming fall. Now, we like to take the nines and tens and think of those as the most loyal seniors because what are they telling us here in this summer study? I have no intention of leaving my carrier. I'm a nine or 10, I plan to re-up. That's what you see in the blue. Now, in the red, well, these are seniors who say I'm zero to six when it comes to how likely I am to re-up. Something isn't quite right. I may not leave, but there's some issues. We want to focus on those consumers as well. We think about them as our at-risk seniors. Now, take a look at this data on top for Medicare Advantage, and then below that for Medicare Supplement. We're trending this over the last two years, and what do we see when it comes to the loyal percent of seniors? They're significantly lower. 
In MA, we're down four points. In med sub, we're down seven points. And all this means is when we're assessing seniors in the summer, they're not as tightly bonded to their carrier. They're more likely to have a wandering eye this fall. And this is one of several slides we're going to go through today that tells us if we had a call what we think this AEP is going to be, our bias is going to be to as good as the last two years with a bias to better. Now, what was going on the previous two years? Of course, COVID. If you think back to the summer 2020 or the summer of 2021, we had a brand new pandemic and seniors back then, all they knew about it is this is attacking people like me. These are the folks who are dying. And because of that, they were less likely to want to stray from their current Medicare coverage. Who wants to find a new plan in the middle of a pandemic where you might have a doctor change or, 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 or drug formulary change? Folks were artificially more bonded to their carrier then. And to a degree, we saw that also in July 2021. Things are different now with COVID. We still have it. We're not out of the woods yet. But things are much better. Seniors are more out and about. And because of this, more likely that they're thinking about if there ever was a time to reassess coverage, it's now, not the last two years. Again, for this reason, we would have to say better chance that this year is as strong, if not stronger than what we've seen before, because folks aren't as tightly tethered to their private insurance. And again, it isn't just MA. The seven point reduction we see in MedSup, that also tells us these consumers, they're not off the table for switches either. Now, where are we gonna see this activity? That is impossible to predict. As much as we would love to do that at Depth Research, we don't have a crystal ball that's gonna tell us where all the switching is gonna occur this fall. A lot of things are gonna influence that. New products, carrier expansion, any star casualties that happen. These are all things that we are not privy to at Depth Research. Now, one thing we are privy to is understanding where MA penetration is growing. Now, what's that? Well, MA penetration just means Medicare Advantage penetration, or the percentage of all Medicare eligibles today who have accepted MA. As we all know, Medicare Advantage is growing. Penetration today is maybe 46 or 47% of the market. Now, we study that because what we have found is lower tenure consumers are more likely to switch in the fall. Well, how is tenure and Medicare Advantage penetration connected? I'll tell you. This chart, this heat map shows us all the various pockets across the nation where we have seen MA penetration grow faster than it has in the average county. Those would be your red spots. Now, why is that important? Well, if MA penetration is growing faster than other markets, that can only be happening, why? You have new members in MA, and a lot of them. And whenever you have a lot of new members, they all have to be low tenured members. And the lower the tenure, the more likely they are to switch this fall. In all of our research, we have a depth. We have shown time and time again, the member you have to watch out for in the fall, it's the member that doesn't have a, a, a single AEP underneath his or her belt yet. If it's your first AEP and MA, high likelihood you're gonna look for new coverage and a decent chance you'll switch. Then the second, it's less. And the third, it's less. And the fourth, it's less. But that first year is a doozy. Well, here we're showing in red counties where you have a lot of first year new MA members. Now they're scattered across the nation. There are some hot pockets, no doubt. You look at North Carolina, South Carolina, a lot of MA growth, a lot of new members, a lot of chance these members will shop but we also see some counties there in wild and wonderful West Virginia. This is just one element that leads us to believe, yeah, we are gonna see disruption this year. We got a lot of new members and new members tend to shop and switch and different markets will have different degrees of them. Now let's understand at a high level what we should be thinking about as an agent when it comes to understanding someone's likelihood to be an active consumer this fall and shop and maybe switch. Here we're looking at basic demographic data. Take a look at the top left. Here we're focusing on those at-risk members, the ones who are likely to have a wandering eye this fall. And what's the data telling us? The younger the member, the more at-risk they are. That's right. 
many depth research studies have shown over the years. The younger a senior is, the more likely they're willing to look for better. Better in terms of new benefits, saving some money. The younger we are in Medicare, the better our health is generally, and the more willing we are to see if there is something that might be even better for us. But as we all age, as we get past 70 and 75 and 80 and beyond, we're less likely to look for better. We're less likely to want to rock the boat. In that instance, we don't want to find a, a new benefit. We don't want to save a buck or two. We just want to pr preserve our access to our physicians, our specialists, and our formula. The older we are, the less likely we are to shop and switch. The younger we are, the more likely. So as an agent this fall, when I think about leads, when I'm prospecting, I generate leads or leads are generated for me. Any lead where the age of that lead is under 70, I ought to treat that as a more valuable lead because that's a consumer more likely to follow through and ultimately move into new plans. What else do we see behind age, below age, pardon me? Income matters, that's right. The lower the income of the senior, the more likely they're on the move this fall. Now, this is our AEP gut check study, a look at the halfway point as to what we think consumers will do. Well, at death, we also do a post AEP study where we see what actually happened last year. And in that post AEP study, we saw the same thing. Seniors more likely to have moved last year were lower income. And once again, as an agent, knowing this, if I have the ability to see scored leads or I know zip plus fours or counties in my service area that tend to be lower income or consumers who are lower income, I ought to treat that as also a more valuable lead. Lower age and lower income, both of these are demographics that tell me better lead. Now, that's just taking a look at loyalty and do I feel as though I want to re-up? Now, the next step in a senior's journey to switching is deciding if you're actually going to shop. And here, that's exactly what we're asking on this slide. In the blue, in this June study, we saw that 20% of seniors already have it in their mind that I'm quite, very, or extremely likely to shop for new medical coverage this fall, a 20% pre-AEP shop number. Now, how does that stack up? Well, if you read the gray text box to the right, in that post-AEP study from last year, the actual shopping number was 44%. So what does this mean? It was a 44% shop number last year, and this year, in this June study, we have 20% of folks say they're gonna shop. Does this mean it's gonna be a clunker of an AEP? Not at all. For that 20% of seniors who say they plan to shop in June, what have they all not experienced yet? None of them have seen an ANOC, have they? None of them have seen their mailboxes filled to the gills yet, have they? And most of them haven't seen any new Medicare commercials yet. These folks haven't experienced marketing. And for the med sub consumers, half haven't seen a new rate change letter. A 20% pre AEP and pre marketing switch number actually portends very nicely that this is going to be a good AEP with a bias once again to stronger. And some of that bias has to be what we see on the right side, these purple bars, inflation. We asked folks in this study everything that's going on with inflation. Do you think that's going to make you more likely to shop this fall? Now, half a senior said no, but of the ones who said it will change my likelihood to shop, it was three times more likely, more likely to shop than less likely to shop. Now, no one knows what's going to happen with inflation between now and 10, 15. It has come down a little bit in terms of gas. Gas has come down 70 cents a gallon, according to AAA. But food energy continues to rise. And so do, do other costs for seniors, rent in particular. We don't know what inflation is going to look like this fall, but we know we're going to see a lot of political ads on inflation, aren't we? The first half of AEP coincides with what? Those midterm elections. And you know political ads will be out there talking about the economy and talking about inflation. So even if we do feel a little bit better with inflation, seniors are going to be ginned up about it seeing all those political ads. Now, 20% pre-AEP shop rate, as we said, 
that's good. But why? Why would these MA consumers already have it in their mind in June? I'm through with this plan, I've got to find a better one. Something had to happen. Either they had a utilization hiccup or they had concerns and questions about their coverage. Well, here on slide number nine, we're looking at utilization hiccups for MA. Anything happened this year that wasn't what you thought? Let's take a look at the top three bars because we're gonna see in the top three bars a common theme. And what do we have in terms of utilization issues for these folks? My allowances covered fewer services than I thought. They were smaller than I thought and they were harder to use than I thought. What's the theme here, folks? Allowances, supplemental benefits, and flex cards. Now, this is important because if you look at the at-risk consumers, the ones more likely to shop and switch this fall, four out of 10 or five out of 10 have experienced these issues. This is what these folks are gonna wanna hear about. And some of them are gonna have a negative experience from their flex cards and supplemental benefits and allowances last year. Now we gotta be careful here because what has fueled growth in the MA market the last three years? These very flex cards and supplemental benefits and allowances. In our other research in depth, we've shown this. In that post AEP study from last year, the number one reason why someone in MA looked into new coverage, you guessed it, flex cards, supplemental benefits, allowances. We published a dual eligible DSNP study back in February. What do we see in that study? What drove DSNP consumers to switch in the lock-in outside the AEP? You guessed it, flex cards, supplemental benefits and allowances. And in our new to Medicare study we published just two months ago, where we look at 64 year olds and why they think they want MedSup or why they think they want MA, what's the number one reason folks want MA today as they age into Medicare? The same three things. Flex card supplemental benefits and allowances have driven MA to new heights, but in their wake, they've left some frustrated seniors who feel as though what I was sold is not what these cards are. We're gonna to wanna to empathize with these folks as agents. When a lead comes in and we're excited to talk about our new flex cards and supplemental benefits allowances, just be cognizant of the fact the person on the other end of the phone may have been sold the same thing last year and not been so thrilled about it. We wanna spend as much time as agents this fall explaining how to use these flex cards and exactly what they are as we do in selling the features and benefits. The last thing we want is a lot of new members, a lot of new clients this fall. By the time next fall rolls around, they too feel as though they bought a bill of goods. Flex cards, supplemental benefits, and allowances will be the main sales theme and the reason for movement this fall with MA consumers. Now, what about the same thing for MedSup? Well, here on the top bar, we're looking at consumers in MedSup and we're trying to figure out what coverage issues they've had. As you can see, the MedSup consumers at risk of moving this fall, six out of 10 of them, what do they say the issue is? Well, it's the same issue we always have with MedSup. Your premium goes up. Now, to be fair to MedSup, that's always the reason why consumers are looking for better. The coverage is the same, the service is the same. It's the premium. You know, last year was 6%. And then this year I got a, a 7% or an 8% or what, or a second premium increase, whatever the reasons are. Folks typically in MedSup decide it's time to look for new coverage because of that premium increase. Always been the case. But this year I would argue the sting of a rate change letter hurts twice as much because of inflation. A senior who has fixed income would rather have their expenses be fixed as well. I know what my home payment is or my rent. I know what my utility bills, et cetera. Well, when it comes to that med sub policy, it's not fixed. In fact, it's guaranteed to go up over time. And I can deal with it as long as my Medicare dollar stretches. But when CPI inflation is running at 8.5%, no one's dollar is stretching anymore like it used to. For these reasons, we anticipate more med sub consumers this year will look for different coverage. Now, in our post AEP study from last year, we found that of all the folks who switched last fall, 9% of all switchers left MedSup and went to MA. 
that was about 1.2% of the entire med subpopulation moved to MA. It's not a ton, but it does happen. And we anticipate more that's gonna happen this year. And it won't just be med sub to MA. We also believe med sub consumers are gonna look for other med sub options, try to get through underwriting and see if they can get a better deal. There are some big new brands out there for med sub. And our advice, whether you sell MA or med sub, both types of consumers are in play this year and this fall. Now we're gonna get into where seniors are, how they feel about Medicare market. And I'd be remiss if I didn't remind folks, boy, coming out last year's AP, seniors felt beat up. They felt like red meat. A lot of sketchy third-party marketing organization activity happened last year, a lot with call centers, and when the dust settled on last year's AP, CMS announced to the whole industry that they had a 165% increase in complaints. And CMS told us, we're gonna change things. And boy, did they ever. We'll get into those new Medicare marketing guidelines in a second. But we knew seniors were frustrated and things had to change. In fact, in our OEP study last year, we found that the average senior who generated a lead got 20 follow-up calls. That led to their frustration. That led to them feeling like they were beat up or red meat. And of course, that is what led to the complaints and that's what led to the new rules. Well, we wanted to understand in this midway point, are seniors just as fed up and frustrated with the Medicare marketing and sales industry as they were at the end of last year? Well, they are. Here on this slide, we have seven questions that we asked all seniors in our study. Tell us, do you completely agree or disagree with these statements? Look at the top one. We had half a senior say, I strongly or completely agree. There's too much marketing out there. I bet as an agent, you agree with that. Or number two, we had half a senior say, there are too many untrustworthy actors out there when it comes to Medicare. I bet you would also believe that too. Look at the fourth. We got a quarter of seniors say, I feel misled by marketing I saw. Bottom line is folks are basically as frustrated as discouraged this year as they were coming out of last year. Well, this allowed us to look at all these 2000 plus seniors in our study and put them somewhere on this index. Think about this index as a bell curve where we're trying to gauge how discouraged any individual senior is. Now on the left side where it says least discouraged, these are seniors who aren't fed up at all with Medicare marketing and sales. They're fine with it. They're about 20%. On the right side of the bell curve, we got about another 20%. They're fit to be tied. They've had enough. And then in the middle, let's say 60% with some degree of discouragement. Every one of the 2000 plus seniors in our study found themselves somewhere on this scale, somewhere on this bell curve. And that allowed us to look at these four segments to try to understand, are folks more or less discouraged, the ones more or less likely to shop and switch this fall? Let's take a look at what we found. Well, here on this side, we have our four levels of discouragement, from least discouraged to the folks at the bottom, they've had enough. Well, the folks at the bottom who've had enough, the most discouraged, that's where a disproportionate amount of at-risk consumers is. Well, what does that mean to me, the agent? This year, more so than others, leads that you have, folks you meet with, the folks who are looking for new, more likely they feel burned by the Medicare marketing and sales industry in the past. Maybe they call that 1-800 number. Maybe they try to add a Part B give back benefit. Maybe they found out that meant they can no longer see Dr. Smith. Our frustrated consumers are most likely to be active this fall. So we just want to think about that as agents and internalize that and, and, and empathize with these folks. They are fed up, but they're coming to you. Recognize their discomfort and, and seek to fix that. Are there certain areas that we've got to fix? Yes. If you look at the gray text box on the right, we found three common occurrences with the folks who are most discouraged and most likely to shop and switch this fall. Three things you're gonna to wanna to be sensitive to as an agent. Number one, price transparency. The most frustrated seniors, the ones most likely to look for new coverage, struggle the most to estimate their Medicare costs. 
anything you can do to help them best understand. Here's what your drugs will cost you. Here's what your deductible is. That's why it's gonna be more this month and less next month. Your doctors, well, Dr. Smith is gonna be a $5 copay, but your eye doctor, 35. The more that sort of price transparency service we can give is just gonna be a salve on an open wound for these seniors. That's point number one. Point number two, here we go again with supplemental benefits and allowances. Some folks don't think those allowances go quite as far. And anecdotally, we hear all the time at that, this has to do with an OTC benefit. Now, seniors love an OTC benefit. We know that. But for seniors who have to go to a website to order their OTCs, many times they find out, this isn't what I thought it was. I know what a 90-count bottle of ibuprofen costs me as a senior because I buy it over at the corner pharmacy all the time. But now I log into my OTC website, and first, I can't find the same brands. And second, these prices are all two times greater. It was wonderful to hear I had a $30 quarter OTC benefit, but if the prices are jacked up 2X, it's more like a $15 benefit. Let's be as transparent as we can about the quality and the pricing of the OTC benefit. And number three, well, those allowances are harder to use than I thought. The industry sells flex cards and supplemental benefits is as the easy way to get your supplemental benefits because we're going to put it on this card. You have X amount of dollars, have it. In reality, sometimes consumers have to call ahead for authorization or they have to submit expense reports, receipts in. If we have any of those hurdles, let's make sure we disclose that up front. Folks that find that out after the fact, you're more likely to lose them the next year. Now, with all this frustration and discouragement out there, we know it's gonna be really important as agents that we speak to consumers in a method and in a manner that resonates with how they feel. So to understand how we want to address folks and any themes we might, we might want in our messaging, we studied six themes this year just to see how will they do with these frustrated singers. Let's take a look at all six themes. Number one, well, this is nothing new. This is the old Joe Namath. We all know this one, don't we? Call the number on the TV screen, check your zip code, see if you qualify. You're missing out on some benefits. Now, these ads never stop. They still run today, and we're going to see more of them this fall. We wanted to test if that message is still going to work. Number two, be there for your loved ones. What's that theme? Well, if none of us are getting any younger, let's make sure your Medicare coverage has kept up with whatever changing health care needs you have. Or number three, keep on keeping on. What's this all about? Well, you're an active senior. You're a young senior. There's some Medicare plans out there right now that have some great benefits for active folks like you. Let's find them. Number four, focus on you. We all know post-COVID mental health services are much more in demand than they were pre-COVID. And this also speaks to that with seniors. Health, health insurance, it isn't just physical health, it's mental health. Number five, cut through all that noise and just talk to an agent. These are local representatives and agents who know your market, who know the products, and who know you. Cut through all that puffery and bluster. Talk to an agent. Or number six, just the facts. Now, we already mentioned an old TV show, right? The Six Million Dollar Man. Here's another old TV show. Dragnet. I bet some of you remember that. Just the facts, man, was the old line in Dragnet. Well, what's a just the facts theme? It just means when we meet with the senior, that's what we do. We cut to the chase. This is what's going to cost you. This is what your access looks like. And this is who you can see. Just the facts. Well, we studied all six of these to see overall which would be the best. And does that vary based on discouragement group? What's the data tell us? It is going to be a just the facts, bam, kind of year. Notice that was number one in terms of how well it resonated with seniors. And it actually did better the more frustrated the senior is. And remember, the most discouraged seniors are the ones most likely to generate leads and shop and switch. Just the facts, ma'am, that may be a good theme 
to work into your sales presentations this year. Now, number two, well, this is the old one. Again, the old Joe name. You're missing out on benefits. Call to see if you can qualify for X, Y, or Z. That message is still going to be out there. It's still going to work with seniors. I hate to say it. But it's going to work with seniors who don't feel burnt by those same messages last year, the least discouraged seniors. After that, talk to an agent. Well, that does pretty well with everybody. Now, it's one thing to have a good theme, but do we also have to think about calls to action. You know, if I'm a senior and I'm ready to find out about Medicare options, there's got to be something that tells me what to do next. Visit a website, talk to an agent. We wanted to see what consumers wanted to see in their marketing. And if it is going to be a just the facts, ma'am, kind of AEP, how best can consumers determine what is fact versus what is fiction on a website? We ought to see a lot of web shoppers this year. Number two, what did we see? Call a local agent and notice that was 2X greater than call the 1-800 number and get a representative from the Utah-based call center. Now, 6% said attend a live seminar. Now, it's no secret that over the last decade, seminar attendance has gone down just about every year. And COVID almost wiped out the whole industry. We actually think this is going to be a rebound year for seminars. And even though that 6% number is very modest, the good news is when you look at the folks in, in gray, the ones who say, I actually think I'm going to do this. 60% of folks who say, I want to hear about a seminar, plan to go to a seminar. So let's talk about seminars. Let's talk about agents. Let's talk about shopping. Here we're asking seniors of all the different things you could do this year, what do you actually see yourself doing? Now, six out of 10 say, I'm gonna review my coverage. Well, unless that agent is talking, unless that senior, pardon me, is talking to an agent or they're on medicare.gov or something like eHealth, usually that is a very basic cursory review of their coverage. In MA, I might look at that ANOC and I might see if my network has changed or my cost structure has changed or my formula has changed. In med sub, I might dig up a couple of years worth of rate change letters and see if I can stomach whatever new number they're offering me. But other than that, very basic. Now, a lot of folks are gonna go online, but what do we see third? A third of folks plan to talk with an agent? Folks, that's a big number, too big of a number. Now, if you look at the gray text box, this is what actually happened last year. And the agent rate was 21%. Last AEP, 21% of seniors met with an agent. Now, no one at Deaf Research believes that a third of all seniors are going to meet with an agent, but we believe it's going to be more than 21% we saw last year based on the magnitude of that increase and the fact that each year over the last five years, a greater percentage of seniors have engaged with an agent. In 2017, it was 15%. Last year, 21 Expect even more interactions this year just like expect more seminar attendance. Now, again, no one at Deaf Research believes that 12% of seniors, one out of eight, are going to go to a meeting. Last year, that number was 4%. But the magnitude of the difference tells us it ought to be good, as good as we've seen, with the bias to better. And what do these two channels have in common? They're face-to-face. -face. Group meetings, one-on-one -on -one with the sales agent, those were harder to do these last two years. When COVID was rampaging in 2020, it was really tough to want to sit down with a stranger and meet them face-to-face -face in a group setting or at a Tim Hortons or a Starbucks or a library. We're just in a different place this year. And just like we said earlier, seniors aren't as tethered to their carriers. They're also more likely to want to engage in some sort of sharing of knowledge in a face-to-face -face scenario. And that's why we think agent interactions, up. Meetings and seminars, up. Now, for meetings and seminars, it's not going to be like it was 20 years ago, but it ought not be as low as it was the last two. Now, we can't really get into a study like this if we don't address at some level everything that's happening with these new Medicare marketing guidelines. And first off, agents, we understand. Call recording and all the new requirements, this is incredibly disruptive to your business. It's a big change. And quite frankly, it's unfair. The issues that we saw last year weren't 
due to the average agent, the independent agent. Now, these were the big call centers, and we know who the bad actors were. In fact, we asked seniors in this slide, you met with an agent last year, you worked with an agent last year, when they explained your benefits to you, were they accurate? Well, 91% of folks said my agent was quite very or extremely accurate in explaining my benefits, 91%. These are great marks, and this just tells us that you, the independent agent, you're doing great work. You weren't the reason for all this, these issues and all these complaints. But here we are. And just a little bit now before the AP, about a month, probably we're not going to see things change. And it's probably going to be in place this year. And again, it is what it is. We have to comply and we got to fight through this. Well, we wanted to understand if some of these, albeit unfair policies, are implemented, how are seniors going to feel about it? Here, we just asked that outright to seniors. Do you agree with these new steps that CMS is saying have to happen with sales agents? Number one, sales agents have to tell you which plans they're licensed to sell. You know, the first minute or two of that recorded call, we have to state, I am not licensed to sell all plans available to you unless I am. Or number two, we only can talk about benefits available in your client's area. Well, that means Joe Namath can't talk about it. $170 Part B give back benefit that does not exist in that county. Or number three, we have to be certain to only talk about benefits that consumers are eligible for. That SDOH grocery card, a middle income consumer isn't eligible for that. Can't talk about it. These are some of the changes the government is asking us to comply with this year. And we ask seniors what their thoughts are, and we add up the strong agrees with the completely agrees. What do we find out? Well, seniors want this too, 80 plus percent of them do. It was not fair, the magnitude of the changes the government asked out of you, but it is what it is. And at the end of the day, the government, their primary focus isn't the agent, it's the beneficiary and beneficiaries want this. Well, what about the big issue? Call recording. And again, we understand just how disruptive this is. It really can impact your business that said is it going to impact your relationship with your current clients when you have to say this call is being recorded is that going to make folks less likely to want to work with you we don't really think so on the left hand side of this chart in the green we're asking seniors who worked with an agent last year okay if your agent says i have to record this call will you not want to work with them? well in green on the left you can see two-thirds of seniors say it's not going to impact my willingness to work with my agent at all and if I think it's going to impact me in some fashion, I'm twice as likely to say, it's actually going to make me more likely to want to work with my agent than less. There are a lot of mistrust issues right now between seniors and the industry. Not your fault, the fault of bad actors. Call recording isn't going to hurt that trust. In fact, it might actually bridge it and help it long term. Is it disruptive? Yes. Do we understand that? Absolutely. But once we get through the pain of figuring this out, we ought to have a stronger bond between us and our customers. Now, I mentioned earlier, we think it will be a better year for seminars, not like it was back in the 90s, right? But we think it will be a better year. Now, what could hurt that? Well, inflation. Hate to beat a dead horse, but boy, when gas costs more, when food costs more, it's a bigger commitment to go somewhere to hear a sales pitch about Medicare, isn't it? Well, it's always a good idea to have some sort of a giveaway to lure seniors into a seminar. And we wanted to understand if gift cards work. Well, they do. We tested a $5, a $10 gas card or $5, $10 grocery card. Would these make you, a senior who says, I have no interest of in going to a meeting, reconsider? Maybe 20% of folks would. Always a good idea to have something to draw seniors in. And if we're going to pursue seminars and meetings this year, having something makes sense. And when inflation is this high, considering a gift card also makes sense. All right, now we're going to have a little bit of fun. Now we're going to get into that agent selection section. Remember earlier when I was talking about the old TV show, The Six Million Dollar Man, and how the government 
found this Left 4 Dead agent and gave him all these bionic parts, kind of made him into like a RoboCop, if you will. Well, we want to do the same thing, but with Medicare agents. Can we construct a Medicare agent that, in fact, is bionic? Well, the way we did this is through what's called a conjoint study. Now, I'm not going to get into all the specifics, but a conjoint study is really a trade-off exercise. What are you willing to trade off? Are you willing to trade off a, an agent who has more experience selling for an agent who also sells life insurance? Well, we did that, and we forced consumers to tell us what kind of Medicare agent they want to work with. And we actually showed them in our survey. Here's agent A, and here's agent B. Which one do you want to work with? Well, how do we describe agent A and agent B? What you see on this chart. Now, there's a lot on this chart. We're not going to go through all of it, but I want you to focus first on the eight Medicare agent attributes that we studied. Attribute number one, age. Okay, when we showed agent A and agent B, we showed them as either 20-year-old or 30-year-old, 40, 50, 60-year-old, or someone over 70. Attribute two, how many years has agent A and agent B been selling? Less than two, 10, 20, 30? Attribute number three, what are you licensed to sell? Do you just work for one carrier? Do you sell all the plans out there, the most popular plans? Agent four, is it just Medicare insurance? Or do you sell life? Do you sell annuities? Do you sell car insurance? Attribute five, work arrangement. Are you with a small local agency or part of a big national organization? And attribute six, this was a key attribute. What is your value proposition? Sales approach. Is your sales approach to a senior? You work with me, I wanna take care of everything Medicare. 100% proactive. I'm gonna know what your current coverage is, what your drugs are, what doctors you're seeing. I'm gonna study all the options available for me to present to you, and you're gonna hear from me. You're gonna hear from me every year. And likely, I'm gonna tell you, you're in the best plan. No need to answer that phone, read your mail, listen to Joe Namath. I got your back, you're in the best plan, I looked at them all. Or I might say, I think there's something better out there for you. Let's talk about it. But my value prop, 100% proactive versus the other value prop, which is just a little bit more reactive, okay? And that one is, hey, if you have any questions about plans, call me. Here's my cell number, morning, noon, or night, we'll figure it out. But here, you're asking the senior to take the first step. Attribute seven, Follow-up approach is going to be a high-touch telephone call. Come one, two. I'm going to make sure you get your card on time. If not, I'll order another one. I'm going to make sure that you know how to schedule that first doctor's appointment. You understand what that drug pickup is going to cost you. And attribute number eight, do I offer retirement plan? So this is everything that we studied. And again, we put agent A and agent B together, and we said, okay, Mr. and Mrs. Senior, who do you want to work with? And we described them differently. The first time it might have been Agent A was a 20-year-old kid who's been doing this for two years, who's captain, but who also sells life versus Agent B, let's say, who might be in their 50s, been doing this for 20 years, sells for all the carriers, but just sells Medicare. Who do you want to work with, A or B? And after the senior made their choice, we had them go through another 11 of these, and every time Agent A and Agent B were different, randomly configured. This allows us to understand what seniors focus the most on. What do you focus the most on when you're buying a new car? You might be thinking about eight different things. You might be thinking about the price of the vehicle, the mileage on the vehicle, the gas mileage, the warranty. You might even be thinking about how many cup holders there are. There are a lot of things you think about when you're shopping for a car. They're not all equally important though, are they? Well, maybe to you, the most important thing in buying a car is price or warranty. What's the most important thing we can see here for seniors when determining do I want to work with a Medicare agent? Age of the agent. That's right. 22% of why any senior says I want to work with this agent has to do with nothing else than the agent's age. That might be like buying a car. You might focus the most on price. We look at the bottom. Whether you offer retirement planning services, man, that was only 4% of the equation. Kind of like how many cup holders are in that car. 
Not everything matters the same to a senior when they're trying to figure out who to work with for Medicare. They're all different, but age and sales approach are key. And as we'll see in a second, when it comes to age, seniors practice ageism. We can see that and so much more on this slide. Here we have on the left are eight different areas of study. Age, all the way down to do you, do you pro, or, uh, provide retirement services. Now we got all the different bullet points that we studied as it relates to age, follow-up approach, sales approach, et cetera. And we got them plotted here against this dash vertical line. Think about that dash vertical line as a line of neutrality. And any bullet point you see right smack dab in the middle of that line, it just means when this showed up, it did not help or hurt the chances of age and A being selected. It was completely a not event. It was neutral. Now, any bullet you see to the left, well, this hurt Agent A's chances of being picked. And anything you see on the right, it helped it. The further left, the further right, it helped it a lot more. So what do we see here at the top? Again, seniors practice ageism. When we showed Agent A as a 20-year-old or 30-year-old, they didn't want to work with them as much as a 40, 50, 60-year-old. But when we showed an agent over the age of 70, well, then preference fell back to neutral. Now, it's a little harsh on seniors to say they practice aging because they themselves are 65 plus, but we can understand why. You know, if I'm 67 and I need help with Medicare and I see there's an agent who's also 65 or 66 or 67, well, heck, they also might be in Medicare. All agents are experts, but if you're in Medicare, You've got firsthand experience. Maybe they would be better to work with. We can see that. Or if I'm in my 60s and you're in your 60s, we're the same generation and we understand what's important to each other. Or because we're almost the same age, we may have the same respect for different things in healthcare, like the importance of a big network. Whatever their reason, seniors practice ages. As we can see with experience, they also want an agent who's more experienced. Two years, five years, hurt, 10, 12, 30, help. Look at the license to sell box. The whole issue with those recorded calls, part of at least, is we got to say in the first minute or so, I'm not licensed to sell all products available to you. Well, what if you say I'm, I'm, I'm licensed to sell most of the popular policies? Not much different, is it? Taking all this data, it allowed us to see if we can build up that bionic agent, that that $6 million Medicare agent. Well, let's take a look at a simulation here. Slide number 29. Here we're showing that there was nothing more powerful than an agent who has that proactive message. This is the bar of preference on the left. And my value proposition is you hire me for Medicare, I do Medicare. You do retirement, I do Medicare. I'm going to know your policy. I'm going to know your conditions, your drugs, your doctors. I'm going to study all the other options available for me to present to you. And if I find a better one, you're going to hear from me. And if I don't, you're still going to hear from me. Don't worry about a thing this fall. you got me on the case. Versus in the middle, you know what? I'm your Medicare expert. And if you have any questions, just give me a call and we'll figure it out. On the left, we do everything. We are letting the senior outsource everything to us. In the middle, we're asking them to make the first move if they have an issue. Both are great value propositions and you can service folks phenomenally either way. But the agent who is a little bit more proactive gets more preference. Let's remember that now as we try to build up that $6 million Medicare agent. Let's start at the top in the blue section. Here we're running a simulation. Here on the left, we have Agent A, who's a 20-year-old, who's been selling for less than two years. And here we have Agent B, a 50-year-old, 20-year vet of Medicare sales. Who would you rather work with? Well, the blue bars below tell us the 50-year-old agent with 20 years experience is going to win 71 times out of 100. And we know that. We know experience is valued by these seniors, and we know they practice ageism to a degree. But that doesn't spell doom for that younger agent. In fact, let's go back in that lab and let's make that younger agent bionic. Let's give that agent all the attributes that seniors want the most. Look what we have done now in the purple. We've taken that 20-year-old agent with just two years of experience 
and given them that very proactive sales approach with a very high touch promise phone call after one, two. The 50 year old, 20 years experience, well, they got a bigger book of business. And here we're asking that senior to accept being reactive themselves. I have to make the first move. I will call you with questions or ideas. And the older agent, bigger book of business, probably looking to do more email than those high touch phone calls. Seniors practice ageism, no doubt. But seniors also value hustle. And when we make that younger agent the one who hustles the most, now the younger agent has given parry to their preference. And if anything, a little bit more preferred. All right, our last few slides are going to tackle inflation and Part B, give back benefits. And what is this all going to look like this year? Now, in this slide, we're showing you data from a study we did back in March. And back in March, we were about ready to do our disenrollment prevention study, a really good study. And literally hours before we put that into the field and started surveying seniors, the Fed had just published their latest inflation number, and it shot all the way up to 7.9% in February. And that's when the whole business world said, oh boy, this is real now. This is a 40-year high. It was a little high before. Now this is real, and this is going to influence the economy. It's going to influence consumers. So we real quick rewrote a series of questions, filled that study, and asked them what you see here on slide 32. Do you agree that inflation is going to make healthcare costs less affordable? Now, in the green bars back in March, we had 40 plus percent of folks say, no, I don't agree with that at all. And on the right, only 14% of folks back in March said, yeah, I strongly completely agree that inflation is going to make my healthcare costs less affordable. Well, we repainted that same question in this gut check study. And what happened? All the data flip flopped. Now we can see in the blue, 40% of folks say, no, I, I strongly completely agree now that inflation is going to make healthcare less affordable. This is going to be a big deal this fall, folks. We talked about it earlier, but we haven't necessarily talked about it with regard to what it means for these give back plans. Let's take a look at Part B give back plans. We're asking on this slide, have you ever heard of these? In blue, you're a Medicare Advantage member. Have you ever heard of these Part B give back benefits? 40% of them have heard about it. Now, if you read the paragraph at the top, last year when we ran this study, that number was 24%. It has gone from 24 last year to 40 this year. In just one year, it's gone up by two thirds. Think about that. And look, even MedSup folks, original Medicare folks, 3128, those numbers are higher than what MA members' numbers were last year. And, and MedSup folks, original Medicare, Medicare folks, don't have access to a give back. This tells us this is going to be a bigger deal. And as agents, we're going to want to think about this. And we're going to want to keep in the back of our mind, folks that we're talking to who are already in MA will be curious. Our final slide for you guys today on the top left, how likely are you in blue as an MA member to look into a plan this year with one of those Part B givebacks? If you added the berries and the extremely likelies, you'll see that half of MA members say they're going to look into such a plan. Now, they all won't. But as an agent, I want to keep this in my back pocket. It may not come up proactively, but they will be thinking about it. I want to be prepared. If I represent plans with a give back policy, I can talk about them and I can talk about their pros and cons. If I don't, I should be prepared to talk about why these plans don't have them because they're taking the government's money and they're putting it into the best network possible, the best drug formulary possible, the lowest co-pays possible. Wherever I am on this, wherever my customers are, just keep in mind, this is gonna be a back of the mind thing that maybe half of MA prospects and leads this year are curious about. Folks, that's a lot to go through. And you've got a lot to go through on this 2022 Expedition AEP journey. We're glad we were part of it at Depth Research, and I hope you valued the data. Thank you so much for your time, and best of luck this AEP. As we said, we think it's going to be a good one with a bias to bet. Go get it.